Okay. So today is the first lecture of our detector class, right? Basically, we will be talking about radiation detector technology and all that. So just now I have been telling you the difference between what we normally call detector and what is a spectrometer. A detector it just detects whether someone is there or not. There is a knock on the door. You don't know who so it is. It may be a dog <laughs> knocking, right? It may be a cat. It may be an old person. It may be a child. But this thing, if you have a video camera, right? Just outside your door, then from the camera, before opening the door, you can get an idea or you can characterize the information. What type of person is this? Or is or is it an animal? Is the person related to me or not? Do I know him or her or not? Something like this. So this is a very basic example. So detector is just like when you are blindly sitting in the room and there is a knock. So I am able to know just from this hearing that someone is there. So this is what detector does. And the most classic example of detector is the GM counter detector. Let me show it to you. Since we are in the lab, so. This is the GM counter, right? This is the GM tube over here. So what it does? This is both bias as well as output signal is taken from here. Now you have done obviously the experiment using this GM detector. What does it does? You have seen that even if we don't put a source near it, the first thing that we have to do with this detector is we have to start. We have to make a plateau, plateau curve, right? And set an operating point which should be stable enough so that if there is a voltage fluctuation it should not affect the counts. This is the first part. And after that you have seen that even if there is no source we get some counts. Where do the counts come from? It comes from the cosmic ray, from the world. Even inside us there are radioactive materials. You know I will talk about it when I talk about medical physics and all that stuff. So, all those radiations when they interact with this tube over here, you know the mechanism, how it works, I am not going to talk about it. Then, it, it sends the overall signal that is created as a result of this interaction. It sends the signals to the counter and we are able to detect it. But, it doesn't tell us, number one, what type of radiation is this? Radiation can always enter. Say for gamma photon. It is highly penetrating. Alpha particle is it doesn't have that much range. It will be stopping in the air. But gamma ray is highly penetrating. You don't need you don't have to worry the, about the cover over there, right? It will just go on. And there is not always a chance that it will interact. There is a finite probability. Remember the, uh, the, in the, the expression i is equal to i0 e to the power minus mu x. We are Lambert law. So e to the power minus mu x. So this means there is an exponential decay. Something like this. And remember, this means that there is always a chance that the gamma may, might, might not interact. Okay, now the thing is that in the detector we will be observing counts, but we will not know anything else. But this is not how we should do physics, right? In physics we have to get information from the radiation that we are getting. And then tell us, we physicists, this is our job, and then tell us about the nuclei which is emitting the radiation. We have to deal with the physics structure of that nuclei. We have to tell. Right? And so what is the way out? The way out is to use a spectrometer. And what does the spectrometer do? Number one, it tells us about what type of radiation is this. Whether it is a charged particle or it is a gamma ray or a neutron or something like that. Number two, it tells us about the energy whether it is 2 kV or 2 mV. Number 3, 
when has the radiation arrived? Now you might be thinking, what does it have to do? It can arise at any time. But I will tell you later on during coincidence spectroscopy, this is very important. And this very information, you remember the rotational levels, the cascading levels, one has it. Vibrational structure, rotational structure, Jerome mind. The question is, how do you know such level is there? Only from this observation, the time of arrival. I will show you later on in the course how it is done. So, in fact, you have done all these things, but what you don't know is how we know these things. And this is what we will try to do in this class. How do we know this level structure? One particular level is there, another is over here, another is here. Who decides that this level is over here and it is not over here? Okay. What is the basic physics principle? This you have never learned in your entire physics course till today. You have just been given that this is the level structure of a nucleus and then you do the structure analysis. Something like that. But you have never questioned, sir, madam, how is it that you know that this level is over there? This is from this observation. Time of arrival of the radiation. Now, the position might change. I will show you later on how it is done. It is on age form. We will do classic examples. In the examination, you might uh, expect questions based on examples. I will ask you something like this. Give an example explaining the importance of coincidence spectroscopy in level C management. Mother can be example of Bosha, Kikoleva. Okay. The next thing is in one minute, how many radiation we are detecting? One, one thousand, ten thousand. Now you might be thinking, what does it have to do? In one minute, if one comes, if, if ten thousand comes, what's the difference? Let me tell you. Suppose we have a this simple GM detector, right? Now if I put the source very far away you will hardly get any much counts from the source. You will just get the room background. Right? That means the count from the cosmic rays, wall, radiation and all that. But if I put the source very close to the GM detector, what will you see? You will observe huge counts. So th see, the very fact that intensity, this thing. So intensity tells us, it is also telling you about the physics setup. In this case, it is not telling you what source it is or whatever, but it is telling you where you have put the source. It is what is basically the solid angle subtended by the source and what is the source breadth. Intensity is also very important. And the next one is direction. Okay, I have a source over here. So the basic physics idea is the source is emitting isotropic gamma rays. Let me talk about gamma rays right now. So even if shop direction is how do you do that? Very simple, put a gamma detector at various angles and observe it, say for 1 minute or 5 minutes. And if you get the same counts, plus minus the error, okay, there will be a standard error. So you will say, okay, this is isotropic. But if you observe different counts, then you will say, no, the source is not an isotropic. And this fact again tells you about the structure, how the nucleus was formed also. Okay, so direction is also important where you are putting the detector or spectrometer. So you see this very basic five types of information you can get from a spectrometer, but only the detector tells you what it's like a digital circuit. If you think like that, it's quite digital in nature. That means you can say either someone is there, that means some radiation is there or not. And spectrometer, we can tell you, of course, if someone is there or not. It can tell you. And if there is someone or some radiation, then what are the properties of the radiation? This is what spectrometer can tell you. Okay, so you see this is the very basic diagrammatical approach of understanding the difference between spectrometer and detector. Very basic ideas. 
Now let me again give you an example. The detector you can see over here, sodium iodide, helium activated in the lab. This is an example of a spectrometer. And the GM counter over there, this is an example of a detector, right? And these two experiments are there in this semester. So you will be doing, you will be basically what I am giving you uh, a prior knowledge of doing experiments with these two type of detectors. Any questions? Follow?